Hi, I'm Tim Guttridge. I'm going to be reading from my translation of Crocodile Tears by Mercedes Rosende, which is published by Bitter Lemon Press. A policeman stands at the door, picking his teeth, spitting out pieces of wood or bits of food. Diego, waiting for his lawyer, has taken a seat as far as possible from the other prisoners, in a gloomy, isolated corner. He's wearing faded blue overalls. His stubble is flecked with grey, his fists are clenched, his throat is tight. That man, walking down the corridor with his hair combed and slicked with gel, a burgundy tie and Ray-Ban glasses, that is Antinucci. The small scar above his right eyebrow, halfway between his nose and his hairline, looks as if it was made by a fist, although it must have happened a long time ago, because the skin is tight and shiny around the mark. His eyes are his most noticeable feature, large, bulging, pale grey and with fleshy lids. Sometimes they become smaller, flattening, narrowing until they are just two lines. Right now, they are hidden behind the ray-bands, very dark in this half-light. He carries a briefcase that the guards don't check, ever. Diego hears loud, decisive steps, heels clicking along the corridor. He looks up and sees Antinucci approaching. It's as if a military march is playing inside the man's head. Antinucci greets Diego with a martial nod, and Diego observes the hand moving forward with a precise movement, like a switchblade. The lawyer takes Diego's hand slackly. The contact is flaccid and cold, a jellyfish that passes, touches, and then goes on its way. Antinucci places his chair, so he is sitting directly opposite Diego. He sits down and opens the leather case, takes out a folder, also leather, which he places neatly on the table. He opens it and extracts a few sheets of paper. The cartapacio, thinks Diego, as he recognises the worn, dark leather spine that he has already seen before on another visit. The lawyer guards this folder the way he guards his own life, or the way he thinks he should guard his own life. The object makes Diego shiver. Who knows why? The lawyer's ray-bands erect a barrier between the two men. Diego has no way of knowing where the eyes behind the lenses are focused. He doesn't know if the eyes are looking at him or are attending to the precise ritual of laying out each individual sheet of paper, a pencil and a couple of ballpoints, blue and red, a mobile phone and a razor, and a watch that he removes from his wrist and places behind everything else, propped up so it is facing him. Diego prefers to believe that the lawyer is not looking at him, and he, in turn, avoids looking at the glasses. He avoids them the way somebody avoids a revelation that he knows he will, ultimately, have to hear.